What's happening, everyone? In today's episode, we break down the second half of the matchups. Of course, we got to talk more Antonio Brown because, of course, that's what has to happen every 15 seconds. And we're going to break down Thursday night's matchup with David Floppertunity. Hey, Foot Clan. Before we start today's show, I want to remind you about the DFS Pass. You can go to DFSPass.com. You're going to get expert advice, expert DFS articles each and every week from Jake Seeley, Robert Waziak, Chris Meany, our whole team, and this year we added a lineup optimizer. This is not like other DFS websites. You're not paying some monthly fee. You pay one time, you get access the entire season, and you get the insight you need to win at DFS. So check it out at DFSPass.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. I feel like I want a redo of last night. I thought about going awful. <laughs> I Can I bet on the under still? Is was- that... It was fantastic to have football back. I see. I got into it. Last. Let's just start start this thing up. Okie dokie. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. Friday, September sixth. We have tons of matchups to cover on the show today. Some news. Obviously, the game last night. Everyone's on Twitter talking about this game. What was it ten to three? Ten to three. Whoopee! A barn burner. Hey, we were talking about it yesterday. The NFL needs to figure out the best offenses or the highest over under of the week. Put them on Thursday. Well, yes, that would be great. But the truth is, we still might not get the... I mean, just slam the unders this week because this was a preseason game to me, at least on the Chicago offense side of the ball. And I was arguing with somebody on Twitter about this. If you didn't play Mitch Trubisky in the preseason, you gave him no reps, and you know what you ended up with was multiple home delay of game penalties on the same drive you had an offense that clearly was never in sync throughout the game in any way, shape, or form at home, and people are saying, well, you just can't risk it. You cannot risk it. Aaron Rodgers didn't play in the preseason, and they came out and they won the game. Listen. They only scored 10 points. They scored 10 points. <laughs> now, that's the Bears' defense too, but that's Aaron Rodgers. Mr. Trubisky is a young quarterback in year two with Matt Nagy, and they say, well, you just can't risk it. You cannot risk it in the preseason. You might have thrown away a game in the regular season by doing that. In you, division. Yeah, and you can you can get injured as much in week one of the NFL season as you can in the first quarter of a, a preseason game. I don't understand because I feel like if this team, if he had more reps in the preseason, now it's not guaranteed that they win, but it didn't look like a team that was ready to play offense at all. It's certainly a, a great point. I've when the when the Jaguars were were going with their shenanigans where they just weren't playing Nick Foles, a brand new quarterback to the team, eventually he got in and got a little bit of action. But it, I was like, "What guys? You, the quarterback needs to get a few reps in, at least if it's a young quarterback." You, yeah, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, I don't care. They know what they're doing. But even on the uh, the Packers side of the ball, a new head coach, new offense. You had some yes. things that happened last night. You know who needed reps. Matt Nagy. Oh, my God. Oh. What What were you doing? What I, are you doing? You're not that smart, Matt. You're not that smart. I, Cordero I, Patterson on, on third and one, you're not smart. I, if you, if you want to use – we'll get into the Mike Davis, David Montgomery stuff, of course, but third and one, you want to go with Mike Davis, fine. But going with Patterson up the gut, I mean, that was just – there was a lot of baffling things that were happening where I've, he did. He, it seemed like Nag was like, watch me do this. Like that, that first play where, where Cohen dropped the ball. He sp- what was happening? He spent his offseason believing a kicker was his biggest problem. That's the, that's uh, the problem that I see. And it, it's frustrating because you wanted to see this offense take a step forward. And, and there's plenty of time for that. Yes. Nobody needs to overreact. But let's talk about the backfield. Let's talk about David not opportunity, oh. or as we saw on Twitter, flop opportunity. Uh. And I take responsibility as a fantasy analyst to say, I'm not just going to get mad at Matt Nagy and say it's his fault. It's 
our fault to not know what he's going to do. That's our job. That's the whole. It's all we do in projecting a player. This looked exactly like I expected Philadelphia to look like in Week One. One hundred percent. I thought we were going to avoid it in Chicago mm -hmm. because David Montgomery is so far and away the best talent in the backfield, and Tariq Cohen was lined up as a slot receiver the entire game. So I thought we'd avoid it here. This is the template I thought I'd see in Philadelphia with Miles Sanders and that it would take some weeks for him to establish himself. Now it looks like it's going to take some time for David Montgomery this to establish is what, himself. This is what terrifies me about the carry on Johnson love is that clearly, like everybody could see, David Montgomery was the best back on the field. He was yes. breaking tackles. He was getting around the defensive line that, that was getting that through the offensive line. Yeah, he was, had a, that, was, that was a big time play where if, if Mitch had thrown a better ball and I mean, we didn't get a clear shot of the field, but judging from where the safety was, it looked like if that was a better ball, Montgomery might have been able to cross that over the field and, and scored. But, you know, Andy's brought up pass protection, right? The two-minute drill. It was Mike Davis in there because they want to be able to protect Mitchell Trubisky. So it's just like the Which the, he didn't the do fallacy, well, in case you're curious. The fallacy of rational coaching. We've talked <laughs> about it before, but I'm, you know, at the end of every season, I always have this notebook where I write down certain things that I want to remember we're, we're one game in, and I'm like, okay, the fallacy of rational coaching. Yeah, the it, I always talk about lenses. That's the way I lo I've looked at it all off season. The coaches do not look through the same lens fantasy owners do, no matter how many letters that I write them. And here's what I'll say: maybe this is still leaning into what I perceive as rational coaching as well. So I'll, I'll take this for what it is. This might have been the best case scenario for a week one for David Montgomery. Matt Nagy will go back and watch the film, as all coaches do. And hopefully, he will see, wow, I made a lot of mistakes here putting Mike Davis on the field when David Montgomery was out there making things happen. Like Montgomery's balance on, on that run to hit the edge and pick up a first down, Like Mike Davis could not have done that. And what he did, what Matt Nagy did with that game plan, it did not work. Well, and here's, They scored three points. So here's one thing hopefully, that he'll... Go. Ah, uh, we gotta go back to the drawing board. When here. he was the offensive coordinator uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs, the the Chiefs did this for a while, where they started to go away from the pass or go away from the run to such a drastic measure that that's what happened last night. There yeah, were forty five pass attempts, fifteen carries, and only twelve real carries. Yeah, three of them backs. were Trubisky scrambles. So that's that's darn near impossible to have only twelve carries in a game. Man, Nagy did it. But this happened in Kansas City, <laughs> and then they talked about – and to speak to your point, yeah. they went back, they watched the film, they saw the problem, and then that's when they started getting Kareem Hunt the ball like so, crazy. So are you – the questions out there, are you worried about Montgomery in the long term, and are you looking at Mike Davis as a pickup, which I am not? I am not either. I think a lot of people will be spending their capital on Mike Davis, and really what happened last night was like the best situation for Mike Davis. He did nothing with it. So, like, what are you hoping? That he gets the same amount of work? Great. Go get your six receptions for 17 yards for Mike Davis. Very inefficient. Mitch Trubisky was indefensibly bad last night. 26 for 45. One interception. Errant throws. Single read. Panic. It was not a pretty picture at all. However, Allen Robinson. Yes. Allen Robinson could have yes. put could have put up 250 yards last night with a competent Mitch Trubisky. Robinson looked fantastic. Seven for 102. Anthony Miller, invisible. And so here's something. On the 57 pass plays, this is courtesy of Jeff Ratcliffe, Allen Robinson was out there for 55. Taylor Gabriel for – oh, what? Uh, he was out there – Oh, thank you. Uh, Taylor Gabriel was out there for 54. And then the rest of the wide receiving court, because Cohen was out as a wide receiver a lot, was basically – Javon Wims, 19, Cordero Patterson, 18, and then Anthony Miller, 11. I'm Miller's less worried about that because of the injury. Yes. But I am worried about it. you're not going to find multiple competent receiving options in this current Trubisky universe if Tariq Cohen's going to line up in the slot as often as he did last night, which was incredible. Now, all of this said, uh, we're, we're reacting because it was the we've been waiting for months for it and it was the only game in town. We can't. Uh, overreact. The, I mean, look at last year, right? Last year, opening weekend, terrible football from the Eagles and the Falcons, low scoring game. The Falcons offense looks like it's a mess. And then they went on and they were fantastic. Yep. So it's preseason week yeah. four, or three, <laughs> exactly. week three, preseason week five. 
Now there was talk about overreactions here because you hear that that is I think is that's that, Geronimo Allison. That, Geronimo? that was Geronimo Allison. Uh, I zero receptions on zero targets, zero yards. After all of that is said and done, usually you get zero yards with zero targets. I know, but they almost always correlate. No, I, <laughs> no drops. No hey, drops. That's, uh, that's, that's that's a positive good. in his favor. So, uh, are you? panicking about Geronimo because I cannot find myself wanting to hold him through a waiver period after a complete goose of target share. Well, and so we, we talked about these two players, Geronimo and MVS, might be players you want to drop after week one that maybe you shouldn't. That being said, the way that they were utilizing them, it certainly looked like they were trying, you know, there were screen game work. They were trying to get MVS the ball, trying to hand it, to him on on run plays um, and, and on two wide receiver sets, it was certainly not Geronimo out there. So there are there are some telling signs that say uh, that Andy and I could take a victory lap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say this: if you can, li if you hear Jason's voice this morning, you'll notice that he didn't take well to the low scoring affair last night. It wrecked me, and now I'm sick. Yeah, now Jason is <laughs> under the. He's fighting through it the way Aaron Rodgers did last night. The way Aaron Jones was forced to, uh, Aaron Jones with 13 carries for just 39 yards. We knew it would be tough. It was really tough. And what you didn't see, unfortunately, was the receiving work that could have saved the night. He only had one reception for zero yards. And so here we are in the timeshare experience again. But it's week one against the Bears on the road. Yeah, so it, relax. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that this this is the timeshare type of numbers. The snap Jamal Williams in on forty one percent of the snaps. That was the timeshare I was concerned about for Aaron Jones. However, when he's not playing the Bears, Aaron Jones will still be able to put up numbers, but his ceiling will be limited. Yeah, there are better days ahead for uh, I think both offenses. So let's yeah. endure the Thursday when they're the focal point of all eyeballs in football. And uh, we'll have a full waiver wire show on Monday. Yeah, but and people are going to want to know, Jimmy Graham, what do you make of that? Three for 30, he had the only touchdown in the game. Yeah, he's 100% a touchdown-dependent tight end, which is what every tight end that isn't in the upper echelon is. So if he scores, you'll be happy. Yeah, and I don't think he's going to score too much. Yeah, I mean, last yeah. there's no reason to believe that it's going to be significantly different than last year. One more player. I, I, I know we have so much to cover. I don't really care. You have to talk about Devontae Adams because last year Devontae Adams had zero weeks without 80 yards or a touchdown. Last night, Devontae Adams had 36 yards. Hey. Four receptions. MVS outpaced him. And this is a different offense. Different formations. It's one game. Devontae Adams is going to be an upper echelon receiver. But you had an entire year where he was more consistent than he was last night. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not. <clears throat> I'm not worried about it. it like Devonte Adams was in almost the entire game, 97 percent of the snaps, while MVS was at 66 percent. Granted, he had to go out for some cramping, but I, the, the the Green Bay line, yeah. what they were just they were outmatched by Chicago Bears. The, the pressure they were able to put on. So that I'm putting. The, the okay. Devontae Adams numbers, usually, like last year, even when they were outmatched, Devontae Adams was able to overcome. We all just kept waiting for Adams to have that 30-yard play to save his, save his night. It just didn't come. All right, it's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. All right. Our first Foot Clan Friday of the season where we select a random Foot Clan member for a very special prize. Oh. Joey Woods, congratulations. You win $55 to shopballers.com on this Foot Clan Friday. Congratulations. Your check is in the mail. You can follow the show on Twitter <laughs> at the FF Ballers. I'm going to encourage everybody today. On your computer, on your phone. Go to youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Yes. Jason's doing it right now. You'll notice if you are watching the show on YouTube, there is a gaping hole in the middle of the set. And, I and know, it's not Jason. I'm not referring to Jason. In the middle you, of our I set. I called you a gaping hole, bro. How do you respond? I think you said I wasn't <laughs> a gaping hole, so I'm I'm fine. I, I fill I fill voids. <laughs> this is my job. 
There is no helmet in the middle of the table. The centerpiece is gone today. This is foreshadowing. We and our friends at Green Gridiron have been working together on a little special Foot Clan footballers helmet build. And a new centerpiece is coming to the set. You will get a behind-the-scenes video, Ooh. I believe, Sunday. We'll release that on our YouTube channel. You'll see some of our uh, studio, some of the set, and you'll see the debut of the brand-new helmet. And I, I've seen some pictures. It is nice. It is, uh, it's got some uh, various pieces that pay homage to the Foot Clan and to the show and to the inside jokes, and I know that you're going to love it. So check it out on YouTube, youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers, and we will break that out here this weekend. Uh, let's get into some more news. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Hey, Judge. Yeah. I, is there any way this show's not like two, three, four hours long? Uh, probably. probably I mean, okay. we can Antonio do it. Antonio Brown. The news broke on yesterday's show. But we didn't get to talk about all the implications. And, you know, the Raiders are not planning on having Antonio Brown in week one. It's not clear if it will be a formal suspension. That is what most places reported yesterday. If we hear more on this recording today, Brooks, I want you to let me know. I want you to sound the Antonio Brown alarm that we just bought. It sounds a lot like uh, like circus music. Wait, Jeremy, was, was that true? Oh, we got news? Do we have breaking news? Why well, hit the button? Okay. Breaking news. Mike, go ahead. I don't care if we're in the news section, but that's like very inception level news. Yeah. Breaking news. We a, a player has an extension. A wide receiver oh. just got his extension. Oh, and it's not Julio. Nope. It's Amari not Cooper Julio Jones. It is Tyreek Hill. Oh, really? He got a three year fifty four million dollar extension. It's so close to a special number Almost. there. But so Tyreek Hill, I thought you had Antonio Brown news for us. Nope. But Tyreek signs an extension. Interesting. There have got to be some clauses in that bad boy. Yeah, and it's definitely a lower risk. <laughs> Three years at $54 million. That's not what Hill thought he was going to be signing about six months ago. I'm telling you, they're going to wave goodbye to Sammy Watkins after this season. Yeah, Tw $21 million cap hit next year after paying maybe. Tyreek Hill. If McCole Hardman shows anything... We'll have to look. Uh, so there you go. Tyreek with an extension. Antonio Brown, he could lose his money. Depending on what this team wants to do, they could suspend him. They could try to avoid $30 million in guarantees. If they do, he'll never play football for the Raiders and will be living in the circus for the duration of the season. Uh, right now, Borland, any updates at all about Antonio Brown's suspension? No. He's shaking his head no. Um, Julio sure. Jones yesterday. Oh, go ahead, Mike. Uh, I was going to say Drew Rosenhaus did go on ESPN this morning, was talking about that uh, Antonio Brown's focus is to to play football, to get back. Um, and so that that wasn't Antonio saying it. It right. was Drew Rosenhaus saying it. But it, it's Trying still, to speak it into existence. Yes, it's still what you, you want to see. I mean, we all want Antonio Brown on the field playing football. Yeah, okay. Well, there was also a report that the team – captains have told John Gruden they're fine with whatever the organization decides to do Ooh. with Antonio Brown yeah. and they Antonio. had been in Antonio Brown's corner through the duration of the training camp season so when, we'll see what happens when you lose your teammates the, that's not good for the snowball that's when Lev Bell yeah last year went from I'm gonna be back after a week to I'll show you you guys don't need me fine <laughs> I will take my ball go home also, you have to bring this up. Julio Jones yesterday said in a press conference, I don't know if I'll play Sunday. He missed practice. They claimed it was rest. He says he's a little sore. This is all posturing. He is waiting for this contract extension that we have been waiting on for the entire summer. And here we are at the finish line, and they haven't got it done. So Julio's kind of throwing it out there that, hey, Zeke signed a contract. Tyreek signed I thought I was contract. playing. You know, he's been playing the the – you know, the quiet negotiation posturing situation, right? Like Zeke has been the very in the press, play the press. I'm in Cabo. Julio's been doing the work, expecting the team to pay him, and it hasn't happened. So you need to monitor that. We all expect him to play, right? But things can change quickly. Yeah, I, I expect him to play. And then we also heard from Sean McVay. Todd Gurley 
not supposed to be on a, you know, a play count, a snap count. Sean. He also said the last. Sean. He said that in the playoffs last year. Tell the truth. <laughs> you can't force it, can you? Tell the truth, yeah, Sean. You, you bringing up what happened in the playoffs last year is, is a perfect example. He said the exact same thing. And you know what? Maybe I believe him. He wasn't on a snap count. Sure. But they also didn't use him very much and split reps <laughs> with someone else. He's just maybe making it semantics. But, yeah, I, you can't just make this a, a you know, oh, man, Todd Gurley. Not, not that it matters. If you draft a Todd Gurley, you're, you're gonna playing play Todd him, Gurley. Yeah. Good luck. All right, and it is Friday, so uh, let's talk injuries. What's it going to be, McFly? Are you in? All right, in or out every Friday, we'll tell you what we're projecting for the injury situations around the NFL, and then we'll update you on Sunday, Sunday Live. Mike will be on uh, all streaming platforms an hour before game time. We'll get game day alerts out there. But right now, in or out, Odell Beckham Jr. In. Although yeah. the, the hip injury at this point has to be at least like a little – uh, twitch in the eye. Yeah, I mean, there's really nothing you can do. You drafted him high, you're going to play him. Yep. Yeah, he's on the he's field. He's going to be on the field. Yes. Stephon Diggs with the injury scare, the hamstring. Return Re to practice. Sorry, return to practice. He's he'll play. Yep. Alshon Jeffrey showed up with a biceps injury on the injury report. Was limited on Thursday. In or out? Sucks to see a, a midweek addition to the injury report, but he's in. They're not worried about. He's his. just trying to get too swole. Mm, that's the been problem. hitting that curl machine too hard, but he's going to play. Yeah, Robbie Anderson in or out. In. Yeah, he'll Kiki play. Kiki QT. He's – we're finally at a wild card here. Still limited. I'm going to say out. Yeah, I, he's out of my lineup, even if he's in. Great, I, great you point. You know, if he, gets, if he gets in the game and he's activated, who's to say he's not going to just re-injure whatever has been keeping him out? My eight-year-old first fantasy league this year had to decide between Kiki QT and Anthony Miller, mm. and he went with Anthony Miller. Oh, Received, well, received a. It's better that they learned the disappointment <laughs> right at the beginning. <laughs> That's the lesson of fantasy that you need to understand early. There's a lot of pain. In or out, play. DK Metcalf. He's upgraded to full. He's he's going to play. Jordan he's, Reed. Still in the concussion protocol. He did participate a little bit in practice, but I expect him to be out this week. All right, news and notes as always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Be sure to check out the Sleeper app for the latest breaking news, notes, and impactful fantasy football tidbits. If you want to know the next song and dance Antonio Brown brings into your life, you can grab the Sleeper app. And before we get into the fantasy forecast, all the rest of the breakdown, the matchups, all of the implications for uh, this week, we want to thank today's sponsor, Pepsi. Pepsi takes all NFL celebrations to the next level, whether it's a Hail Mary touchdown, could have used more of those last night, a defensive stop on the goal line or a Super Bowl win. When it's time to celebrate, you crack open a Pepsi. And you know what? I've always been a Pepsi guy. I always like to celebrate. I like to pre-celebrate with a Pepsi. I like to post-celebrate with a Pepsi. Uh, and look, you remember the... These big time celebrations, Michael Thomas paying homage to the Joe Horn phone call oh, celebration. Oh, yes. uh, <laughs> Is that your cell phone? That's, that's, that was, no, that's his. That he's cracking, cracking open, open the Pepsi. Pepsi. <laughs> Kyle Rudolph did that duck, duck, goose celebration. Or duck, duck, was gray that, duck, as they call it. I, th I think it's duck, duck, Allison. Isn't that the. Oh, nice. No. Um, so. There have been a lot of historical NFL celebrations, and Pepsi is the official sponsor of the NFL, and they want to remind you to always be celebrating. You can never celebrate too much in life. No, right? no. And Foot Clan, this episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. Using Head & Shoulders every day is great offense for your hair, Jason. No, 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 Mike. Great defense against flakes. Offense. Defense. Offense. Defense. Ryu. Ken. Sub-Zero. Scorpion. David Montgomery. Mike Davis. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. We're supposed to be talking about head and shoulders and how it's like a two-point conversion for your hair, Jason. Uh, it's more like uh, a safety and defensive points for your flakes. <laughs> sure. Head and shoulders is great offense for your hair. And look, you can check out head and shoulders on walmart.com or just look for head and shoulders, blue and white bottle at your local Walmart store. Fantasy forecast. 
All right, we continue our preview of this week's games. Yesterday on the show, the Titans, Browns, Ravens, Dolphins, Bills, Jets, Redskins, Eagles, Chiefs, Jags, Rams, and Panthers were covered. So if you want the breakdown on those games, you can go click one episode before. It's completely free to play any episode in your podcast app. You can just click them all you want. That's it doesn't, true. Just like a keyboard. Uh, but yesterday we previewed uh, those games, and today we've got nine matchups to get through. So Falcons, Vikings, 47.5 point over under. Vikings, four-point home favorites. What are the storylines you're paying attention to here? Are you benching Matt Ryan against the Vikings defense in Minnesota? I am not. Uh, it's This is very much like Aaron Rodgers, though, of last night. You spent that early pick on the quarterback, and now you got to play him week one. And, and look – and Matt Ryan's a great quarterback. The storyline for him all comes down to Atlanta's offensive line. We're, we're told, and we still continue to be told that it's been improved, but that thing looked like trash during the preseason. So that's the concern for Matt Ryan. Can his offensive line hold up in an already negative matchup? Yeah, on the road. I, I mean, all this noise in this offseason has been made about Oh, his dome schedule. Look, okay, he's in a dome, but he's playing against a great defense. I think that matters a little bit more. Uh, it, it really is, I agree, all about that offensive line. I, You know, you're still starting Matt Ryan if you draft him. I think Kirk Cousins is going to have a great game as well if Matt Ryan can throw the ball on this defense. Uh, you know, this Julio the- Jones... He, he he basically said in his press conference, it's fair to say he's going to play on Sunday. We expect him to play, and if that happens, I mean, that's why Kirk Cousins was my, was my start of the week because this should be a game where even though you've got two decent defenses, one really good, the offenses should be able to overcome here. Jason, you have Kirk Cousins as your start of the week. Diggs should be out there. He's at home. I like that. Weirdest stat I've ever read. Ooh. Falcons allowed the most passing yards in the red zone in 2018. I've never heard that stat before. Passing yards, yards in the in red the zone. Yards in the red zone? That's the weirdest thing. Ever. Normally, you kind of are concerned about passing touchdowns in the red zone, but apparently the Falcons well, allow you to pass so, the majority of the 20 yards. Well, right. Because they do. Uh, the Falcons are notorious. Their scheme, they allow receptions to the running back because they do that on purpose, where that's what they want you to do because they believe that They'll, if you take the dump off, we're going to be able to tackle you for two to three yards or, or just a very negative type of play. So that may lead into that statistic. Now, Mike, you've talked a lot about, look, it's week one. We don't have very much to go on other than things from last year from a defensive standpoint. And, you know, you're going to kind of, you know, dance with the players you, you know, you yep. drafted, right? Yes, yes, you are. And so Devonta Freeman, you're going to have him in there. Yep. You know, are you willing to start Calvin Ridley in this game? Are you willing to, you know, flex him out there? He's our consensus wide receiver 27 on the week, which says that, hey, depending on your options. As a wide receiver three or a flex player, that's what Calvin Ridley is going to be week in and week out until until we actually see consistency from Calvin Ridley. You just, you know that he can score double digit touchdowns as a rookie, but the the consistency is probably going to be a problem. I think we'll know real quick what's going on with Dalvin Cook this year because sure. he's at home. He's our consensus. Uh, you know, I have him at four, Jason three, Mike two on the week. The Falcons have been bad against pass catching running backs, gave up the most receptions. Mike just brought that up. If we don't see the the kind of workload from Dalvin Cook this week that we expect, would you be concerned that he's not, you know, he doesn't have the ceiling? No, because Dalvin Cook, to me, I, I know both of you guys were super bullish on Dalvin Cook. And your your love for him made it look like I, I didn't want him on my fantasy team, which is, is further from the truth. Like I think Dalvin Cook is a great player. I think he's going to be an excellent fantasy option. I'm still leaving, leaving a little bit of wiggle room in here, though, for Alexander Madison, who I think is a, a good running back. If we get to... Or if the Vikings get to the two, and all of a sudden Madison comes in, it's not going to shock me. I'm not necess- I'm not declaring that's what's going to happen. I'm just leaving room for it. All right, you're in a pickle. You got to start Austin Hooper or Kyle Rudolph. Which one do you start? Austin Hooper. Hooper. I think uh, you know this is the matchup where 
you know, everything changes year to year, but it's the same uh, defensive scheme. The Vikings were basically top 10 against wide receivers, running backs, quarterbacks, not against tight ends. That's maybe where, uh, you know, Matt Ryan can find a, a hole in the defense. So I would I would start Hooper. All right, Bengals, Seahawks, games up in Seattle, nine and a half point favorites, uh, Pete Carroll and company, Woof. 44 point over under. That's got to put the Seahawks near the top of implied point totals. They're, what, 26 and a half points. This should be a nice start to the season for Seattle. Yes. Right? And Chris Carson. I don't think the Bengals' defense is going to be vastly improved. Last year, 31st against the run, 30th against quarterbacks, 32nd against the tight end position. Let's go Chris Carson. He's out there. Would you start flex Rashad Penny in a matchup like this? In, you know, in a in a deeper lineup, it, we had a uh, dynasty startup draft where we went wide receiver heavy, and so uh, we are starting Rashad Penny this week. I say we because Mike and I are co-owners. Yes, yes, we are. Um, and this is the matchup where at least week one, like as the season goes on, Penny might become more valuable. You would hope uh, it, for a matchup like this, where if you're up really, really big, you might be able to see Chris Carson or Rashad Penny. Both get more work as they're able to run the ball, not forced into uh, passing downs and passing situations and game script in the fourth quarter. So, yeah, I, I think in a pinch, you can uh, pinch a penny. <laughs> okay. I, I get it now. It took me a split second there. It's a name joke. Mm -hmm. Very uh, nice. Also a famous phrase it's nice that you don't wait 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 hold on. what's hold on jason what's the phrase oh he's googling penny it. pinching okay okay yeah that's, that's <laughs> just, just making sure no you had me scared my well, fingers because you went, went to the keyboard i was like you went turn a phrase with pinch a penny and i just wanted to make sure that you didn't believe that, that, that the was, phrase was actually i'm going to pinch a penny a penny pinched is a dollar earned <laughs> As they say. <laughs> Old Benny Franklin. It's good to know that you are just as uh, acute with your references while sick mm -hmm. as you are while healthy. Cincinnati gave up the most passing yards per game last year. 275 a game, third most points per game. Uh, it's not been pretty. Tyler Lockett, light him up. Yes. Oh, yeah. And then you've got uh, Russell week. Wilson as our consensus QB7 on the week. Uh, per Evan Silva, Lockett caught 26 of 29 slot targets. Uh, when Baldwin was out there last year for five touchdowns. We'll get to see what they want to do with Tyler Lockett, snap count, target share. It'll be really fun Yes, and a great situation. On the other side of the ball, Joe Mixon, you drafted him to play him. You've got to play him. It's, it's not ideal to be up in Seattle, but he should get the work. And then Tyler Boyd, without A.J. Green at the beginning of the season, he's our consensus wide receiver, 19 on the week. Boyd is in a, a great volume situation. When you're looking at that line, I mean, Seahawks favored by almost 10 points. And I buy into that, that where the Bengals are going to be having to throw the ball and Tyler Boyd's going to have – he's going to have to carry this offense at the wide receiver position. And I'm not playing him. I, so I'm not playing him. But I am very interested to see Tyler Eifert. It's been a long time since we have seen him be a healthy player. When he is a healthy player, he is great, but he is far more often a injured player. I was holding my breath that you were going to say John Ross. No, uh, no, no, we're good. I, I, I was I, holding I, my breath that you were going to say oh. Will Disley back on the field. Yeah. Would you play uh, Eifert over Will Disley, Mike? Yes. Uh, Wait, what about now? Well, now that the flute is in, Big Montana... If Big Montana is actually back, then it will be – that will be an incredible recovery. But, yes, I'm going to go with Tyler Eifert <laughs> over Will Disley if I have to play one of these guys. And I'm with you on the on the game prediction there. This is not like the Redskins-Eagles game that I think could be tighter than people think. This is a game where I think Seattle will manhandle. You'll see uh, Jadavian make his debut, and we'll see what that Seattle defense looks like in that running game. Bringing it back. Chris Carson, Pete Carroll. Let's move on. The Colts, the Chargers in Los Angeles. Chargers six and a half point favorites. It's a 44 and a half point over under. Well, it's the Jacoby Brissett, Indianapolis Colts era. You know, it's going to be interesting going on the road against the Chargers defense that uh, was pretty darn good last year. With Brissett, we, we have a brand new DFS segment coming up at the uh, – end of this show which I'm very excited about 
I didn't go this route, but Jacoby Brissett is a is a good value. He was obviously priced lower going into Week One. I, I'm you know he's a he's a, a running back. Uh, he's a quarterback that can run. He's not primarily a running quarterback, but I think if they get down, he's he's a sneaky guy because everyone is so off of Andrew Luck that they're not giving Brissett the respect that he deserves and of what he can do in his own right. I agree with you, Jason. Marlon Mack going up against this Chargers defense. Uh, they were beatable on the ground last year, at least in terms of fantasy points given up, 23 a game, which is 24th in the league. Yeah, I was going to say, if if you want to test the Chargers defense, I'm okay going Marlon Mack, but I'm – I can't endorse Jacoby or the wide receivers. Look, the, the Chargers secondary is fantastic. Casey Hayward is one of the best shutdown corners in the entire league. So I'm I'm not very excited for the passing attack. We do have breaking news on Antonio Brown. He just issued an emo emotional apology at the team meeting this morning with team captains standing beside him. So maybe we won't see a suspension. He's pulling those levers. He's <laughs> he's speaking into the microphone just like the wizard does. Look, man. Wow. Wow. I am thankful that we, you know, we we can never go 10 minutes without an update from Antonio Brown. So, uh, okay. If you hear anything else, Borland, send it along, please. Uh, we the, the tilt. People were tilt trading Antonio Brown yesterday. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> well, T.Y. Hilton is actually a player people will have to decide on this week because of where he dropped in drafts and the fact that you were I was getting him in the fifth or sixth round at times towards the end of the draft season. So I think there will be start set decisions with T.Y. Hilton. That's, that, fair, that's fair to say. Uh, he's our consensus wide receiver 23, so we feel it confident feels, enough to get him out there. I do. That feels too high. I think I need to move him down. I mean, you, you brought up Casey Hayward. See, the thing about Brissett is he doesn't have to always throw against Casey Hayward, but he's a shadow corner, and T.Y. Hilton will actually have to face him. So Brissett can go elsewhere. You could see some, you know, uh, Paris Campbell runs. and uh, So it's one of those things where I want to wait and see we, if I can on T.Y. Hilton. Well, let, let, let's put it this way. And maybe maybe because of where he's ranked right now, you said you might adjust him. I'd like to I'd like to go to bat for T.Y. Hilton. I'd like to put it on the line this week with a water bet Please for T.Y. Hilton. Um, let's go 11 fantasy points. Are 11, you willing to go that way, Mike? 11 fantasy points. I'll, in, go, I'll take the over. In half point. In half point. In half point. Are you willing to take that bet? 11. I'm, yeah. in, I'm, yeah. I'm in on the under. Yeah, I'll Do take you the want under. in on it too? Yeah, I'll take the under. Water bet. I was going to throw out some names here for Jason, though. Because Andy's, Andy's in. Okay, Jay, these, these are players that you almost surely drafted after T.Y. Hilton, and you sure. you can play them. So wide receiver just on the opposite side of the ball, Mike Williams. Yes, I would play him over T.Y. D.D. Westbrook. 100%. Okay, let's, no, let's we're going to check it. Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones, yes. I think the, the upside of him having a two-touchdown game against Arizona is there. Okay, last one I'm going to throw out here. Jarvis Landry. Yeah, I mean, look, if something comes up mid-game for Odell Beckham, I, I think I'm taking all of those players okay. over T.Y. Hilton. All right, uh, the, the Chargers – well, let's uh, – Eric Ebron. I drafted him in the 14th round of a draft, which was the Mega Bowl, and I couldn't even believe it. It was three rounds after Mark Andrews. That is a, uh, a mistake, in my opinion. The, yeah. He still – any time, well, yeah, like you got him too early. No, no, that is not what I mean. Any time <laughs> that you have a tight end that put up the kind of numbers that Eric Ebron did last year, not every tight end can do that, and tight ends are often uh, not every quarterback can do that too. Of course, well, quarterbacks actually don't play tight end. So but I'm you're saying right. not every quarterback can feed Eric Ebron. Listen, Mike, who's the best friend of a quarterback in trouble? Who's the best friend of a quarterback that is uh, younger? And establishing himself. Jack it's a gi Doyle. It's a gig – oh, my gosh. How <laughs> stupid is that? Well, here's the thing. So How can Jack Doyle be the best friend when Eric Ebron is sitting there 
and you can't give him the credit that he's due, and Jack Doyle gets credit that he's un- that he didn't even do for a tight end. You know, you want a touchdown, you want the touchdown upside, and if I have to put my money on Doyle or Ebron getting the touchdown, it's definitely Ebron. I realize Doyle is out there on more snaps because he's a great run blocking tight end. He's going to be in there. He's all also the a great time. pass catching option for Jacoby. Brissett. Sure, he's a nice pass catching option, but those Was. passes are very low quality close to the line of scrimmage type of passes. He's not a, the same red zone threat that Eric Ebron is. So if I've got to play one, I'm going with that upside. I, you know, And when they do run the ball with Marlon Mack, that's where you can beat him, get down into the red zone. They're not looking T.Y. Hilton's way. They're right. looking Eric Ebron's way. So I, I, I side with Andy on this one. And I wasn't even trying. We got caught up in the stupidity of the conversation. He's Andy's tight end one. Okay. Week. That's what I was gonna say. I'm not like even saying you must start him. I just think he's undervalued in the fourteenth round. He was a guy that was a top five tight end last year and he's being forgotten about because nobody wants any part of this offense and I think that's stupid. I really do. Okay. Uh the Chargers side of the football. Keenan Allen, you're gonna play him because he's out there. Yes. Mike Williams, consensus wide receiver twenty five on the week. And then you've got Hunter Henry making his uh return to this offense. Colts allowed the third most fantasy points to tight ends last year. You drafted Hunter Henry to be your tight end, right? Yes. So there's not really anything to talk about. There's not. It's well, the, the thing to to talk about is, and maybe this matchup is not the best to evaluate. We'll have to see a few, but how do Hunter Henry and Mike Williams coexist? Because Mike Williams had a much larger role, and the running backs had a much larger role in the passing game because Hunter Henry was was not there. He missed the entire season. So now that they have a premier young tight end back, how does that all shake out? You know, I I get that narrative a little bit. I do. I've I've thought it myself. But you have to remember they also it, it's not just that they lost Antonio Gates. It you forget he was there last year. They lost Tyrell Williams. So they're you know yes Mike Williams. But they got Dontrell Inman back. Exactly. So I I I think they can coexist. Austin Eckler, Justin Jackson, probably the biggest storyline on the team. Eckler, you play 100%, and Justin Jackson is fine if you are in a pinch. Yeah, I I don't really see – I think Eckler's the better play. Yeah, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't see them. I don't see them too far apart really? in terms of, of you know viability of starting them. The team has been very clear that they're going to work in a perfect 50-50 committee. Well, it, so you're yes. just looking at touchdowns versus receptions. It's easier no, to bank I, on receptions. The, the, so I, I think what this is, for from my perspective, is it's a matter of what the team is saying, which is a 50-50 split, versus what the team did last year in the games where Eckler, Justin Jackson were there, and Melvin Gordon was out. We saw it much more like a 65-35 you know, a, a yeah, yeah. split. And so – it's yeah, really just a question of what you believe. Now, yeah, he was a play, rookie play, last uh, year. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He Players was a rookie. mature. Yeah, and so the team is saying it's 50-50 split. I think that makes a lot of sense to be a 50-50 split. So you can absolutely do that. It's just you have to also weigh that with what the team did last year in this exact situation also, with the same person. what they did in the preseason. So it's it's hard because to, to go with what they're saying when they, like, when they have actual actions that they have taken during the preseason. And maybe that was – just they're getting th- Eckler ready. Yeah, but I don't Justin know. Jackson scored in the preseason. Eckler didn't do that. I think what it what it is is that Justin Jackson carries more risk. There's no I risk. I totally agree with that. There's no risk that Austin Eckler is going to be yeah, the 35% of the timeshare. Sure. There and is risk there with Justin Jackson. Yeah, I feel like Justin Jackson needs to be the scorer. If Justin Jackson's not scoring, you don't get what you get with Eckler, which is guaranteed targets. 49ers, Buccaneers. Buccaneers at home. They are favorites. It's a 50-point over-under. We talked a little bit about this game yesterday uh, just in the context of starts of the week because Mike has Jameis Winston. I have Chris Godwin. We all expect Bruce Arians to come out, stretch the field, do what he does as a head coach and offensive mind. And so we'll see. Is there anybody else to catch the football outside of Evans, Godwin, and O.J. Howard on this roster? We'll find out. Brashad uh, Perryman. I mean, well, yeah, Perryman. Watson. It's it's of course there's guys that will catch the ball. It's just about what is the target share for the big three? Is it seventy percent? Is it eighty percent of the targets? It certainly could be. <laughs> I'm playing everyone. I'm, I'm playing. Dude, I want to play everybody in this matchup, but but Jameis Evans Godwin in automatically. Of course, Howard is in. I don't know. I heard Goblin. 
Chris Goblin? Chris That's Goblin. I heard, I heard Chris Goblin. Just eating up them targets. The uh, red, red Goblin? Oh, man. This is frightening. I don't know if I like it or not, but that's what I heard. So, <laughs> Well, if you heard it, that's what we're moving that's forward we're, with. <laughs> the Goblin. Chris Goblin. <laughs> goblin up them targets. <laughs> show is so stupid. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, but the, the running backs. Andy, you, have, you are the proud owner in our, in our league of record of essentially the entire backfield for Tampa Bay. Are you playing any of them? Let me say something, Mike. <laughs> you said I was the proud owner. <laughs> that is the furthest thing from reality. I am the what is the I'm the embarrassed owner, shameful, shamed owner, uh, mopey, sad, depressed owner of these guys. I will say during the course of this week, I did have Peyton Barber in my lineup at one point. Oh, he's not anymore. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, because some health concerns cleared up in my mind. Let me see. Nope, he's in. <laughs> no, yes. he's still in. Yes. I have to decide yes. between uh, Peyton Barber in one of my two flex spots or go with the broken-fingered Deshaun Jackson, the off-the-Achilles Emmanuel Sanders, the possibly inactive Adrian Peterson, or Ronald Jones. Oh, oh man, so, I would tell excellent. you the right I start, guess but I'm you're playing against me. In the, I think I might lean back towards Djax now that I know he'll be on the field. So that's right. who I've moved in. It's very cathartic for me. I feel great about moving him to my bench. And then on the 49ers side of the ball, I'm going to play both Coleman and Burita. I think that they will see enough work in in this game to be usable. I'm playing Pettis, and I'm playing Dante Pettis with confidence this week. I know you, you like that's a guy you may have drafted later on because he had quite the ADP tumble with his tumultuous off season, but I'm going to play him with with full confidence. Jay, are you with me with Pettis, or are you Look, benching I, him? I have him in multiple leagues. In both of those leagues, there's deep, they're deeper multi flex leagues, and he is in all of them. He's in the lineup, but I am not playing him with confidence. I'm playing him with a very hopeful, uh, like I thought you were going to say frightened spirit. No, I, I'm I'm playing hopeful that he does, uh, you know, have a great game. But I think it's very realistic that Marquise Goodwin can come out here and dominate too. He this could. is a 50 point over under. This should be one of the higher scoring games of the week. You have basically uh, the combination bad of defenses. offenses and defenses that you know, set up for a lot of points to get scored. So that's not to say Goodwin and Pettis can't both have great games. Um, but, you know, we need to bring up Marquis Goodwin's name. Yes. Because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense is the type of defense that could very easily just get torched by Marquis Goodwin over the top. Yeah, Dante Pettis should have a good game. If he doesn't yeah. have a good game in this matchup against the Bucs with a 50-point over-under, I'll be concerned about his involvement in the offense. I can agree with that. And by good game, I mean target share. I don't sure. even care if he comes down with incredible fantasy performance. He should have a, a nice target share. He should be able to get open against his secondary. Look, he was your my guy that you pivoted off of yeah. and just I took a dump on because you hate him so much. And now he's playing against you <laughs> in my lineup, week one league of record, and he's going to give you ultimate payback. It would be a very satisfying thing for you to be able to. Yeah, uh, that will be great. Prove that narrative. George Kittle plays football. Oh, he's gonna. We don't need to talk about George. He, here's how we need to talk about him. He could so easily win, wind up as the 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 best play of the week at all positions. I mean, George Kittle could just dominate this Buccaneers defense. Yes, Lions, Cardinals, Cardinals at home. They're two and a half point dogs at home. Forty seven and a half point over under. And it, the message from this game, if you haven't got it already. Start your Lions offensive pieces. Carry on Johnson, Kenny Galladay, and Marvin Jones. I've got Marvin Jones in a flex spot in my dynasty league. I'm feeling comfortable with that. Right now, the Cardinals secondary, it, it's beat up. They're you know, on, they're onto the tertiary. Right, right, right. It's, <laughs> it goes deep right now. No Patrick Peterson suspended for the first six games. Their big free agent acquisition of Robert Alford at corner to be the counterbalance to Patrick Peterson. Well, he is balancing Peterson because they're both out. That is correct. He is, uh, you know, stepping away from yes. the game in honor of Patrick Peterson. So, look, Kenny Galladay. He, the, the routes are oh. so smooth for Kenny G. Kenny G. Kenny it's... G is going to have a good game. Marvin Jones. Oh, but oh. Kenny is back. He is so smooth. There yeah, both is. both of these guys, Marvin Jones, Kenny Galladay, put him out there. Yes. And uh, 
It's just going to be – it could be a good game for Matthew Stafford. Two quarterback leagues. You need an opportunity to flex a player. Mike, you you brought up 300 yards, multi-touchdowns it's, as a possibility. Here. It is well within the realm of possibilities for Stafford. On the other side, my start of the week, Kyler Murray. What are you looking for from him in his first start? Uh, I'm looking for poise. How does he react to the blitz? Because in yes. preseason week two against the Raiders, it was – very bad it was very poor against the the blitz and just it's the tempo like the every the, all the media during the off season was that this Arizona Cardinals offense you're seeing this has nothing to do with the actual real offense they are pulling the rope a dope now let, let's see it let's see does that pace come out does that that throw percentage come out It'll yeah the uh, Cliff Kingsbury was asked by the local media here about why he believes, and this was very recently, why he believes that the the offense will work in the NFL. And his response was because it's never been tr never been done before, and that is kind of indicative that you're not you have not seen it in preseason. He has not what they were doing was a vanilla, not what they're running come game one. So I am super excited to see the pace of play the speed at which they play. And, yeah, for Kyler Murray specifically, it's all about that blitz. Can he uh, can he react quick enough, get out of the way quick enough? They, there's a bad offensive line for the Cardinals. Um, it's and, nice he's got the freedom to run now. It's not preseason. He's right. got the freedom to run downfield. David Johnson's our consensus RB8 on the week. The Lions allowed the ninth most rushing yards. He should be heavily involved in this game. David Johnson, you should feel safe to play. And um, – Handicap the Cardinal wide receivers. Like, if you're starting them, how, how are you ranking their production for the week? I'm going to go Kirk, Fitz, and then don't really care. Okay. Yeah. So, Kirk, Kirk over Fitz this week. Um, it'll be very, very exciting to watch this game, not just for Jason and his, uh, you know. Carry on my but for our hometown team and seeing what Kyler Murray is going to bring to the NFL. For someone that has spent the last couple of years just banging the drum for C.J. Anderson, we got a lot of people championships last year off of C.J. Anderson's work for the Los Angeles Rams. I hate you, C.J. Anderson. <laughs> I mean, I just I, you are you are I, like he the was game hasn't twin. played. He was my you were twin. Two peas in a pod. I know, and I'm just telling you, you've turned. I have turned because Benedict I Arnold am over here. So afraid of what C.J. Anderson is going to do in this game, especially after watching Mike Davis. Yeah. Ugh. Giants, Cowboys, Cowboys at home, seven-point favorites, 45-and-a-half point over under. What are we expecting out of this game? Would you start Sterling Shepard on the Giants' side of the football? If I can avoid it, I would prefer to do that. I mean, okay. He, Shepard was a later pick. I think he's going to be fine over the course of the season, but this is not where I'm taking my shot. In Dallas. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Evan Ingram? Oh, yeah, that's that's what I'm watching for on this team with that report that came out late. The big plans for Evan Ingram. Let's see if they are actually true. On the Dallas side of the football, Dak and Amari, the two uh, players still without monstrous contracts on this roster. Are you expecting big things at home from Dak and company? Jason, I, I, am. I know you love Dak this week. Yes, I am. Look, once he got Amari Cooper last year, he was the quarterback six the rest of the way. On our Sirius XM show, I made him my start of the week. I was going to say, I'm going to give you both. You get both this week. I get week. both Kirk Cousins and yes, Dak Yes, you're feeling under the weather. Thank you. You get two starts of the week at quarterback, Kirk Cousins and Dak, so you love him. Dak, is, the Cowboys are the third highest implied team total according to Vegas this week. The matchup is great. They're at home, and you might have Zeke on some kind of a snap count. The best receiving core for the Cowboys that they've had since Dak has been there. I, you know, if Dak fails here, then where is he going to really succeed? And this is a guy who, look, he he's he runs the ball enough, runs touchdowns in, and so far in his career has never not been a quarterback one at the end of the season. So, yeah, I think Dak has been left for dead, and he's a good play. Michael Gallup, is he a sneaky snart, as we would say, in this game, in your flex spot? If you believe in Dak and you believe that, you know, Amari Cooper hasn't practiced a lot, plantar right. fasciitis, Michael Gallup has certainly looked like he's leveled up a little bit with training camp in the preseason. Is he sneaky? It's He might be. The last time Dak took on, uh, when we saw him in Week 17, you know, there was an absolute monster game where there was a plenty of production that could have gone through 
for for Dak, which Michael Gallup could be the recipient of some of that. So he's he's sneaky, but uh, I don't know if I could actually do it. Okay. Well, yeah, and it's, it's one of those it, things. In week one, you're playing in guys. You, you drafted Gallup so late, so unless you're responding to an injury, you're probably yeah, not needing to play. That, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's like, could could he be a sneaky start? Yes, but there's no reason to yet. You, you, you play the, the team you drafted. All right, Sunday night football, Steelers, Patriots. The Patriots, five-and-a-half-point home favorites, 51-point over-under. That means Vegas is given 28-and-a-half points to the Pats, 22 to the Steelers. I brought up Sonny Michel. I think he is a just an outstanding play this week, and uh, there's a chance you're making a decision about Sony if you got him in the fourth, fifth round. I love him this week. He's my start of the week. Talking about the rest of the offense, though, for New England, it, it, it's more question marks then you might believe to start a year uh, for them. No Gronk, obviously. Julian Edelman, Mike, I'm sure you feel comfortable playing him. 100%. Josh Gordon, comfortable week one, game one, throwing him out there. Comfortable, no. You think he'll get full snap count? I, I do. I think he will, but that's a, there's definitely a, a world where he doesn't. But okay. It, but like if, if I was saying if I have Gordon, I'm going to play him. That, that's what I'm saying, just – more confidence in Gordon than Gallup, no doubt. Yes. Oh, certainly. Okay. Well, both are both are starting wide receivers. You know, got to bring them both up. Yeah. I mean, it, look, I want to bring up Juju real quick because Juju is a guy that you're, you're going to start. You drafted him in the back of the first, early second round. You're going to start. This is a terrible, terrible matchup for him. New England historically takes away the number one receiving option from every team, and that includes. The Steelers. Look at Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown, over the since 2014, he's had four matchups against New England, and he scores six fewer fantasy points per game in those matchups. They they'll double, they'll triple. I thought you couldn't block out the Sun. Look, that's the goat. I mean, the, Antonio Brown is as good as it gets, and he's been limited against the Patriots. I for those reasons, like here's the deal: the 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 Patriots scheme away your best option. And I think they're going to choose Juju to scheme away, which means I'm okay. I, I think James Conner is going to have himself a fine game, and they're going to say, we want you to beat us on the ground slowly. You know, no no big plays for Juju. We're going to take him out. They've got Gilmore. They've got double and triple teams that they'll throw his way. And did it, we made it, we made a water bet yesterday on James Conner. I believe that he'll, have a, he'll struggle in week one. This offense finding its way without Antonio Brown and company. So we'll see what happens. I did we do top? Was it, was it top, top 15? fifteen? Yeah, that's a, that's not a great bet for me. <laughs> no, that's why. <laughs> that's why my cop in my in head. I thought top twelve. Yeah. I should have made a top twelve bet because you would have both taken that. Yep. And I would have felt a little bit more comfortable there. But um, other pass catching catching options on the you know either side of the ball. Pittsburgh Vance McDonald. You probably drafted him to play him. You yeah, got to put him out playing, there. But if you if like we have to see how the Moncrief James Washington split pans out it's what side are you on right now i still lean moncrief i think that's where i'm at too but it's it, it's very similar to what for green bay like marquez and geronimo even though we're, it, we're split and we're each picking a side we didn't want to play either of those guys last night because you want to see how it's going to shake out and, first and you certainly don't want to take the gamble in a matchup like this against new england which Correct. is you know allowed the second lowest completion percentage um to this quarterbacks is this is a game with a 51 point over under, which is great. Vegas is expecting a lot of points. Yeah, scored. we had a 46 point over under last night, Jason. I, no, I was just, I would, I, I'm not slam Vegas. the under. I would slam the under. I do not expect this to be some super high scoring game. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Texans Saints Monday Night Football double header. The Saints seven point home favorites, which puts them at you know the game's a 52 and a half point over under. That puts them at 30 points. That's mm. the highest implied team total of the week. Yeah, so. Yeah, Breeze, Kamara, Michael Thomas, Jared Cook. Jared Cook's from the start of the week. They're all playing. What about a flex play of Latavius Murray? Are you in on that with a 30-point, uh, you know, implied point total? Yeah, I, I mean. Texans it, were pretty good against the running backs last year, only giving up 18 fantasy points per game. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not the best matchup, but it's the best situation. When you're at home, favored by a touchdown, those are when the running back touchdowns come, and you look at how they used Mark Ingram. That being said, Alvin Kamara is so good down near the goal line. You just can't tackle him. You, they, they scheme him 
to have enough room to just make one or seven guys miss. He can do either. Latavius or Miles Sanders this week? Ooh. Sanders. I would go Sanders as well. Kenyon Drake or Latavius Murray? Drake. Drake. Darius Geis or Latavius Murray? Geis. So I guess I'm not playing Latavius <laughs> Murray. <laughs> All right. Well, the Texans did allow the lowest yards per carry in the league last year. Only gave up 62 yards per game on the ground. So uh, now maybe, that, maybe you're right. Yeah, I mean, you, are you, you're saying the, uh, the Texans run D. I mean, correct. Jadavian Clowney is one of the best run defenders in the league, and he gone. So I, I do expect them to be a little bit more uh, susceptible to the run. All right, on the Houston side, you're starting to Sean Watson. You're starting DeAndre Hopkins. This is not rocket science. But Will Fuller, Duke yes. Johnson. Will Fuller. I'm super excited for Will Fuller. In this game. Yes, in this, it, in this game when you have Kiki QT, who still is limited and may or may not play at – Will Fuller's healthy. Uh, they've said he's ready to go. He'll be in his normal role. And his normal role, when he's healthy and he's playing with Sean Watson, that role is scoring touchdowns. The more, t the more time that passes, the less comfortable I feel about Duke Johnson in week one. I think Carlos Hyde will be used. I think that we're, you know, you're facing a Saints defense that allowed the fewest rushing yards per game in the league last year just – that's not an exciting 55, though. That's a depressing 55. And so, you know, for a team that is still finding its way, throwing to the running back, which is something that Duke Johnson does well, you know, I, I'm starting to wonder if it's if your ceiling is not very high on Duke this week. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that Duke Johnson ever really had a a great ceiling in this offense. Yeah, I mean, but there's an argument to be made that in this offense, Carlos Hyde just arriving – if there's a time for Duke to make his hey, it's going to be earlier than later. I'm still playing Duke. I'm just saying this ceiling-wise, we haven't seen rushing touchdowns from this team in forever. We haven't seen receptions to the running back in forever with this team. So I, w I wasn't in on a ceiling for Duke, but I think he is a, he was like Lamar Miller. If Lamar Miller was still around in the starting running back for this team, I'd say, yeah, I'm going to play him. It's not exciting but oh no 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 jason we interrupt this message with more antonio brown no. news uh here's a sense that things are changing quickly according to ian rapaport there is a chance he not only does not get suspended but actually plays this week wild time well it's oh, not that's good news it's well, not sure but it's all it part of news? the news it sounds like terrible frightening news because this is the last game we have to preview and it's monday night so i hope we have clarity as a fantasy football community as to whether or not oh, man. this is going down to the wire it's, with antonio brown it's really really simple for fantasy i mean it's it is this simple if there's no clarity by sunday morning you do not take the risk on antonio if they, if they're not saying he is playing then you replace him in your lineup and deal with whatever happens. If he happens to play on Monday and go ham, uh, you, you're you fine taking that loss. You have to be a smart fantasy owner. If there's not clarity Sunday morning, don't get cute. Unless you want to get cute with someone else in the Monday night game. If you're going... Tyrell Williams. Emmanuel, Emmanuel Sanders sure. or you know someone like that, then sure, you've got the time to, to be flexible. But otherwise, get him out of your lineup. I just want to throw this out there. Brooks has made you know the effort to... Paste in a circus tent emoji next to Antonio Brown's <laughs> name in this matchup preview. I want a, That's good work. Was it you, Brooks? <laughs> yeah, it's the important stuff I'm doing. Excellent, back here. excellent emoji work. Broncos, Raiders, uh -oh. Monday night, Raiders. Two point home underdogs in this one. That actually surprises me. That does me well. Can I we double if... check that? That's that's the case, huh? Two point home underdogs against the Broncos. Forty three point over under. Well, I, I, I didn't keep a close so, eye on it, but I'm wondering. No, that's not what I have. No, I have Oakland as one-point favorites at home. Th this is right. old. So but, this is Antonio but, Brown Oh, so it's the effect the line. of Antonio. That's what I was going to say. I'm he, sure the line moved when they thought he, Antonio wasn't going to so play. So that means that we might put them back as the favorites here's something based on the last report. Yeah, Maybe. Here, here's something that's really <laughs> funny. So <laughs> according to <laughs> what usually happens <laughs> with <laughs> Vegas <laughs> lines, right? This is a large movement. I mean, a huge movement in the Vegas line based on the availability of Antonio Brown or no Antonio Brown. When Zeke signed and came back, the best running back in football, the line didn't move. 
They're like, whatever. <laughs> you know, you want to talk about, like, in the NFL, do running backs matter? Vegas is like, yeah, who cares? They're fine with or without him. Interesting. Uh, Flacco makes his Denver debut. Philip Lindsay, Royce Freeman, decisions to be made there. Emmanuel Sanders. There's a lot of kind of mystery about this Denver Broncos offense. Yes. Uh, we've talked so much about Royce Freeman being able to potentially step up into this 50-50 committee. Haven't talked enough about Philip Lindsay, what he did last year, and whether or not he just plain old repeats that as the more electric, explosive back in the backfield. Could definitely happen, but we're we're dealing with a new quarterback, head coach, uh, healthy Royce Freeman, Emmanuel Sanders returning from injury. Do you have any sort of expectations for this offense in week one on the road in Oakland? It should be a, ma a madhouse. Expectations for my fantasy team, I will play Phillip Lindsay. I'm not playing Royce. I'm going to... I'm going to let them show me that Royce Freeman actually is in a 50-50 timeshare because if he's back down at that 35%, 30%, sometimes getting a goal line carry, then I'm not interested. Yeah, we played that game last year and lost with Royce Freeman, so I, I don't blame anybody for, for doing that. The, the difference is last year at this time, everything, all the buzz was about this Philip Lindsay kid, and there's really been no buzz from this regime so far through preseason. The guy on that side of the ball that I am – most excited about I'm it's it's funny how far I've come because early in the offseason I was not a believer in Emmanuel Sanders ability to get back from because this injury. what he has done is impossible sure but it's I, like that burger I'm all the way the pendulum has swung to the other side and I ha I am fine starting Emmanuel Sanders uh, you know I hate to say this but I will. If I had your <laughs> roster, Andy, you would play Emmanuel against Sanders. Against me, uh, the truth is I would play Emmanuel Sanders over Deshaun Jackson, over Peyton Barber, without even hesitating for a second. Well, you you that would you need to hesitate, or would I? You need to hesitate with an Achilles. You need to hesitate. Well, sure, but you're you just I said without also, hesitation. I hesitate with a broken finger. Sure, I hesitate with. A Peyton the Barber. talent of Peyton Barber. So you're, you've got hesitation everywhere. I would, <laughs> therefore, you just feel very confident that, that Sanders will be the guy. Yeah, I think he'll be the number one target. He matches what Joe Flacco in this day and age is wanting to do. Yeah, he's still, he's still a downfield threat. I mean, he's still, still Emmanuel Sanders. So. He's an all-field threat. Yes. He, I mean, line of scrimmage, 5 yards, 10, 15, 35, it doesn't matter. Emmanuel Sanders beats everyone everywhere. Yesterday we talked about Darren Waller. If Antonio Brown's back, we still like Darren Waller. Do you mean... The Walrus? The Walrus. <laughs> yes, I do mean the Walrus, Mike. Thank you for pointing that out. I absolutely mean the Walrus. You're welcome. Where's our Walrus emoji, I Brooks? believe that means we have a Walrus and a Goblin as our starts of the week this week, <laughs> which is really <laughs> That's important. Uh, welcome. Welcome, ladies welcome and gentlemen. Welcome to the Clan. Like, as we yes. sing clown music for other people... We are, in fact, the Look, clowns. you can be both serious, <laughs> accurate... And funny at no, the same time. They're not mutually exclusive. Still trying to find that the funny part to figure that out. Yes. Uh, but Darren Waller, I still feel confident rolling yes. him out there. I think he's just going to be part of the game plan, and we're not dealing with an offense that has shown us, you know, that Derek Carr likes to throw the ball downfield. I think Darren Waller, get him in space, get him the opportunity, get him some drag routes, give him the ball, let him see what happens, let him jump over a a, a building. Ooh. That'd be impressive. I mean, he's he an would athletic. Score for sure, he's an athletic freak. I think he'd be out of bounds, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We do know the rules of football. Josh Jacobs, he makes his debut. Excellent. It's got to be better than David Montgomery's, doesn't it? Has to be. Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, one hundred percent. Like we we have liked David Montgomery over the off season, supported him because I think he's a good player and he will have his opportunity. But when people started drafting Montgomery over Josh Jacobs, my mind exploded. Oh, we sounded the alarm and made fun of those people. Like, Josh Jacobs is a first-round pick. He is going to be the guy. On a team with a ton of vacated targets, which usually yes. focuses on passing to the running back the next season, he has the pedigree, the draft capital, the opportunity, the situation, and he's super talented. That's why yeah. he was drafted in the first round. All right, a couple of injury updates since the show started. Mike Evans actually did not practice on Friday. He has an illness, so I wouldn't expect him to miss time, but follow that. We'll update the you goblin. Sunday morning. Yeah, the goblin just set up for success. Marquise Brown did not practice on Friday. I would put that him into question whether he's going to even run around a few times on Sunday. So it's not like you were starting him, but... 
it, it I don't just, know, Miles Boykin. That's what I was going to say. It, lean, it le- lends credence it's to a, Miles Boykin. Yeah, my, you could you could make an argument in DFS play to take a sh- – no, no, not I'm me. shaking your head. Not me. Well, speaking of DFS, we have a brand-new segment. We're super excited about it. It's time. Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. Oh, Mike, you've outdone yourself. I'm pretty happy with that one. All right, Ballers on a Budget. Each week we're going to bring you our, I guess you'd call them our best buys in DFS, our best values, players that we think you can mix and match into your lineup so that you can find that right mix of winning when you're, talent. Yeah, when you're in a tournament play and you're trying to, you know, not just beat one person where you've got to be in the top 50%, you really usually need to find a couple super cheap options that allow you to put in those great stud running backs that are super expensive. You've got to look elsewhere sometimes for the true values. And and this all plays Foot Clan. This is like really really cool. We have a Foot Clan tournament weekly on, weekly with massive prizes through the year you go to fanduel.com slash ballers to get in it's, a, it's all the whole year long and you have a chance to win an all expense paid trip to arizona to hang out plus tons of prizes um and we're giving you our our best uh yep. cheap ballers on a budget picks. And we'll, we'll, what we call these plays i mean they're value plays but on the Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast uh, last year, we would talk about these guys. These are – it's a key. It's a master key so that you can actually unlock your roster so you can fit those high price running backs in. And this, this is what you have to do. You have to go on a budget. So let's we'll, – we'll start at the top because I my guy is the most expensive of the three players, but – it's I, it just it just happened to overlap it, where he's my start of the week at the wide receiver position and he is cheap enough that I want him all over the place. It's my sweetie, my sweetie Didi coming in at fifty nine hundred dollars. That would be Didi Westbrook. Yeah, well, wide no, receiver. That's his name now. People know who he is. Okay, but my sweetie Didi Westbrook coming in at fifty nine hundred bucks. It's it's incredible value. He's, I've already been gone over why he's in such a good position. So if I love him. The targets will be there. High-scoring matchup. Yeah, I mean, if I can afford him, I would definitely take him over my pick because he, he's way undervalued here on FanDuel at 5900 bucks. I'm going with Marquise Goodwin at $5,400. Yeah, he's interesting. If you, if you need to save more money and you want that high upside, you're talking about a player who can, you know, in a 50-plus point over-under against a terrible defense with lightning speed yep. that's going to be low-owned, meaning if you put him in your lineup – it's not like, oh, well, everyone's got him in his lineup, so now you're just with all these other. You separate yourself from the pack. And I've, I'm going bottom of the barrel. I love it. As cheap as they come, the original Hollywood before Marquise Brown, the veteran wide receiver. Is that they called him Hollywood? Oh, yeah. yeah Hollywood? That's, that's the nickname. Rashard Higgins, wide receiver hmm. for Cleveland, 4500 bucks on FanDuel. That's as cheap as it gets. And uh, this is a player that has survived the Corey Coleman days. He's the veteran uh, amongst the group. He's surviving the Antonio Callaway days as well. He is, and he's going to be out there, and he's as cheap as they come. And if, for some reason, yeah. Odell Beckham misses some snaps, we know that Baker's pretty target agnostic. I mean, it's not like he's not going to give the ball to his big guys, but Rashard Higgins can make plays. He's proven that over time, and so I think at $4,500, he's completely – you know the best value that you can put on your team, and uh, is a little sneaky. I really, yeah. I really believe that. So oh, I love it. Uh, Jason mentioned it. You need to go to FanDuel.com/ballers. This is the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. Each and every week, you're going to have an opportunity to win big prizes. And the coolest part is, this is like the Mega Bowl. You compete with fellow listeners of the show it's each only, and every week. It's only for our audience. Like, and there's you, only 500 spots in week one. Yeah. So. so Every week, oh. there's only 500 spots. If you want one, you've got to get in quick. And there's 15 chances to win over $30,000 in prizes. FanDuel is hooking our listeners up here. So you got to go. FanDuel.com slash ballers is the only way to get into that tournament. And the grand prize, uh, as Jason said, an all-expenses-paid trip to Arizona. you got to come hang out with us, see a show. Quote prize. Yeah, prize, punishment, whatever you want to say. Exactly. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But check that out. FanDuel.com slash ballers. Go enter it's going to be a lot of fun we're going to close this thing out we want to thank our studio sponsor pristine auction 
Allen Robinson, who balled out last night, a signed Allen Robinson jersey, $46.68 yesterday on pristineauction.com. That's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E. Auction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS. BALLERS. You will get to browse hundreds of daily auctions. You will not regret that registration. Go check it out, pristineauction.com. Guys, more football on the way. Yeah, and don't forget, Sunday Live. I'll be there an hour before game time talking news. Start sits. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And remember, Foot Clan Pepsi takes all NFL celebrations to the next level, whether it's a Hail Mary, a defensive stop on the goal line, or a Super Bowl win when it's time to celebrate. It's time to crack open a Pepsi. Pepsi, the official sponsor of the NFL, reminds you to always be celebrating.